Hey guys, gonna do a real quick one here. Gonna show you how I bench test a coil. Not that I actually do that. I prefer to do it, of course, in the car so I can verify my power, ground, and signal is actually working. But some people are afraid of doing that because they don't wanna blow their PCM if they do it wrong. A justifiable reason, by the way. So for such people, I'm gonna show you how you can take away that risk by just bench testing the coil. Very easy, no skill needed. The history here, the vehicle owner brought a car into me that has a single cylinder misfire. Of course, the owner replaced the plugs and wires first, and when that didn't fix it, he replaced the coil. And then when that didn't fix it, then he brought it to me. Pretty typical thing I see all the time. So if you're not the type of person that fires the parts cannon and you would have wanted to see, is the coil really in need of being changed before you spend all that money? This is how you do it. Okay, very basic setup. I've pulled my wiring diagram here and we've got a electronic controlled coil with of course three wires. So what we've done is hooked up the power and the ground to the battery. And then I've also got a terminal that I put for the signal feed, which I'm going to deliver a low amperage signal to activate the coil. And then what I've done here is I've got a ground wire where I've created an air gap for the spark. Should be pretty obvious what we're gonna do here. So just gonna take my uh, test light and give a low amperage feed in. I've, I've also got a um, oscilloscope here. That's just something I'm going to do for another video on my paid channel where we're going to go over this in much more detail and also show the waveform so that I can verify the primary and secondary are working, but we'll do that later. So just going to put in my input signal. We can see and hear the spark. Let's make sure that's showing up on the camera there. Okay, you can see that it's definitely working. We've got at least a half an inch air gap there. So even if you didn't have the fancy equipment like the oscilloscope and all that, given that and the fact I have spark, I'm verifying my primary and secondary are in good shape here. So had the owner just done this simple test, would have been able to save the money on this coil. Hey, now I've got an extra coil in my parts collection if I ever need one. All right, it doesn't get any more basic bitch than that, but I uh, just wanna remind you, this really isn't the optimal way to do the test. The real way to do it is with the coil connected in the car and then verify that you've got, while under load, the voltage for your power and your grounds and also that you've got the signal input working. A lot of times I'll just manually do that signal input, just make sure that you're doing it right so you don't fry your PCM. The bottom line is that if you've got your powers and your grounds working and there's a signal input from the PCM and you don't have spark from that coil, you're done. There is no question about it. The coil is bad. So there's really no reason to do this bench test for most people. If you need a little more help with this, if you're not sure how you would read the wiring diagram and make those connections, and if you want a complete understanding of the entire ignition system, so you get past the point that you think the primary is the coil and the secondary is the plugs and wires like most people think, and it is not the case, trust me, You'll want to tune in when I get my website up and running. I will have a multi-part series that goes into extreme basic detail so that anybody off the street would be able to fully understand any ignition system and diagnose it. But for those of you guys that are past that, here's just another way you can do it using basic stuff. Hope you found this helpful. We'll see you next time.